Good morning. Welcome to worship. So glad that you are here, that you are joining us. However you come, wherever you are, whenever you are, you are welcomed. You are loved. We are standing in the Memorial Presbyterian Church's downstairs worship space, greeting you today. Let us come into worship this morning with our opening hymn, Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. lift our voices together in prayer. Creator God, creativity begins with you, you who are revealed in time and space. Star maker, your word has the power to create in whispers and shouts. The universe continues to take shape. Architect, you drew the lines and arches. You measured the dimensions needed to make a world that would sustain life. Master chef, you made the ingredients to sustain life in plants and animals, food for all. Artist, your flair for original designs painted a canvas filled with color, depth, and diversity. Incarnate one, you put flesh and blood onto bones and marrow. You breathed life into humanity. When you stopped to pause, you were delighted with it all. You were content and filled with love for every tiny atom and nucleus that resides in all that you had created. Compassionate one, you gave us senses to enjoy it all too. You wanted us to look after it, to share in your joy of it. We come this morning in awe of the sculptor, the architect, the artist, the designer, the potter. The Lord our God, let us worship the creator of heaven and of earth. Friends, confession is part of the rhythm of life. We act in this world, we stumble, and then we admit our shortcomings, and we remember that we are loved. The simple act of admitting we are wrong develops in us an honesty between us and God, between us and one another. And that honesty allows us to enter real and meaningful relationship. So let us confess our sins before one another and before God. Forgive us, Creator, for failing to enjoy all that you have made, for failing to look after it and nurture it as we should. Help us, O oh God, to turn from our mistakes, to respond to the needs of our fragile world, its climate and its life forms. Help us to be co-creators with you, working for the good of the universe, for the benefit of all life in our world. Amen. Friends, God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. You are loved. You are forgiven. Let us worship God. This week I want you at home, who are the younger kids, or when you're with your grandkids, or with your, with your children, to think about this. Albert Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is though everything is the miracle. I challenge you to go out into this world and look around and see if you can spot the ways God's miracle shows up in this created world. Let us pray. Dear God, teach me to see your miracles in this world. Amen. We open our narrative lectionary season, starting at the very beginning, Genesis 1, verses 1 through 2, chapter 4. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void. And darkness covered the face of the deep, and while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were from above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, fruits of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God sent them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And so it was. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God saw, said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. When I was in high school, I played the trombone. And I love music, but rhythms often tripped me up. It took me a while to get used to tapping my foot to the rhythm. And then when you threw in an added like random rhythm where like you had to come in before the beat, I never get that right, ever. Because rhythm is hard for me. It's hard for me to keep with the time. And I had to teach myself to go with the rhythms of the music. And then I joined the jazz band and jazz music just threw me all the way off because that's not always in rhythm at all. And who knows what jazz people are doing at all. <sighs> yeah, I know. Some of you really like jazz music. I really think though that rhythm is part of the DNA of our life. Maya Angelou says it really well when she says everything in the universe has a rhythm. Everything dances. And I see this playing out in our text today. Did you notice there's a beautiful rhythm to the creation of life that sets the tone for the beginning of our entire scripture? In the beginning, God created the heavens of earth, and God saw that it was good, and God rested. Not just the end of seventh day, but this rhythm of creation happens every single day. In the beginning, God creates, God rests, sees it's good, God rests. It's a movement that leads us along. God creates, God declares it good, God rests. Why is this important to us? Because this is the very beginning of our story. This is the origin story of how the world was created and what the Lord set into motion. It's an opening rhythm that's meant to set the tone for the whole of life. Create, declare it good, rest, repeat. There's something that should be said about this gentle flow from one state to the next. And there is something very countercultural in that rhythm of life. In our own society, we face messages that tell us that we need to push back against the natural rhythm of life. There is a drive built into us and into the fabric of our world that pushes us and tells us to produce, 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 push. Little time is given to rest. Little respect is given to the idea that we need to pause. But creation and rest go hand in hand. When the pandemic hit, rest was thrust upon us. We were dragged from our offices, from our social calendars, from our gatherings, from our busy lives, and we were forced to stop. And it was traumatic, and it was painful. But there was something about being set home that resonated with us. Not being able to stay busy was unexpectedly useful. And since that time, there are plenty of studies that have shown that productivity actually raises in the workplace when people work from home. 
and we've seen some of the most beautifully creative pieces come from artists during this time. I mean, creativity was on a high because it had to be on a high and because we were getting plenty of downtime to think about what we wanted to create. It was a forced Sabbath and many families I know found solace in that forcing of Sabbath. And to be clear, I'm not advocating that we return to that time of forced rest. It was hard. The problem with the hard stuff is just that. It's a hard stop. And the act of coming full stop was very painful and led to an overcorrection in our busy lives. What I do think, though, is that the text is leading us to something that is more balanced. A rhythm of creation, gratitude, rest. In the text, the observance of this rhythm is the thing that keeps the world turning. It keeps the world from coming undone. God pauses, not just at the end of seven days, but at the end of every day. God could have kept going. I mean, we know God could have said, let there be light, and there was light, and the story could have just kept going. And he said, let there be birds, and there were birds. And he said, let there be plants, and there were plants, and let there be people, and there were people. And it could have just rolled at an endless cycle. Produce, 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 produce. That could have been the story of our creation. But our creation story is God creates, God appreciates, God pauses, and starts again. Now, if the God who created everything can create, appreciate, pause, shouldn't we be able to do the same? The rhythm of life needs to weave through everything we do because it's in the midst of this rhythm that we truly find our way to meaningful life. Do not be so anxious to go back to the busyness that was, but rather, Find the way to stop producing. And just as rhythm was foundational to my playing the trombone, rhythm is foundational to life. Find the rhythm you need to rest, create, appreciate, rest, create, appreciate. This week, I would challenge you to spend some time setting the rhythms of your own life. Allow there to be space to work, to appreciate, and to rest. Because it is in this rhythm that God will lead you forward. And it is in this rhythm that we will thrive. Amen. This week, as an added part of our worship rhythm, I invite you with the whole church to let us confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you.
Let us lift up our voice today in prayer. Creative spirit, sweep through the world today. Bring your healing and restorative powers to all the places where there is suffering, injustice, violence, or hate. From chaos you brought calm. We desire that calm for all who today sense they have lost the power to control their lives or who have had that power taken from them and who struggle to go on. Light and dark are needed today, light to shine on those who seek to hide their lies from us and to use their positions to cause harm to others. Darkness is needed too. In darkness, new life can begin to grow, healing and reconciliation can take place. Land and water are sometimes no longer free. They can be used by corporations to gain power and wealth. They are sometimes forcibly taken from the many and abused by the few. Plants and animals struggle to survive as conti humanity continues to grow and in doing so destroys great forest homes of animals. Men and women cry out in their millions, too many facing insecurity, too many forced to flee their homes due to violence or threats of violence. Lord, we are failing in the task you gave us. We are watching as the climate changes, as we make few make decisions for the many, as lines are drawn for ownership. Lord, we are but caretakers here. We have forgotten this at our peril, and we pray that you would help us to turn around and see our mistakes, and to find solutions that bring healing and reconciliation to our planet to mitigate the harm we have already done. Lord, help and give us strength and to make the hard choices to sacrifice our wants and desires for the greater good. Amen. And now we lift our voice together in the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we are saved by grace. Let us respond in gratitude for all that God has done. Lord, thank you for your amazing and unending grace. Teach us to be people who share that same grace with those around us. Amen. And now, friends, our benediction. We go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. Wherever we are, God has put us there. He has a purpose for us being there. Christ lives in us and has something he wants to do through us. We believe this and go in his grace, his love, and his power. Amen. Amen.